In lecture 6 of Electrical Fundamentals, we will uh, study CV parallel circuits. Uh, we will also solve some 10 different uh, examples, and these examples should um, let us better understand how to perform circuit analysis. As we mentioned, this lecture will focus on CV parallel circuit, but the best way to um, appreciate what's a CV parallel circuit is to really link it to what is a CV circuit, what is a parallel circuit, and now what do we mean by a CV parallel circuit. Um, so if you see, this is really a progression of what we saw from lecture four, lecture five. Uh, and, and now we're kind of merging both of them, lecture four and lecture five, we're merging series circuit, we're merging it with a parallel circuit in order to obtain a more complex uh, CV parallel circuit. So in, if you recall from lecture four, we said that when we have components that are connected in a series, the total resistance is simply the addition of both uh, resistances, right? So in this case, you have two resistors. They're connected in series. They're just uh, they exist in one loop. You simply add them together. Uh, so we saw this, and uh, and and that's fine. Uh, in a parallel circuit, we also uh, studied uh, uh, what happens to the total resistance, and we said that in a parallel circuit, the total resistance uh, of components connected in series will be smaller than the smallest resistance. And in order to find the total resistance, what you do is you take um, one over R1 plus one over R2, and then you flip that. And you get something like this. Maybe we didn't see it quite like this. Um, I, I could show you uh, what what we saw. Uh, so uh, what, what we essentially saw was something like this. So we, we wrote it as R total equals to one over R1 plus one over R2. And we flipped it. Right, and we got this. So in reality, they're just the same, except the, the last flipping is not shown in, in here, uh, but it uh, it should be uh, the same. So um, the, this is what 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 we um, kind of saw with with lecture five. Now, what happens when we have a combination of a, a, a circuit that is part of, of the circuit, a subset of it is connected in uh, series and a subset of it is connected in parallel. In that case, um, it becomes a bit more complex, but it is still solvable. You can still find the, the total resistance that we get, or if you want the R EQ, EQ or equivalent, they're just the same thing. It's the same thing as saying the total uh, resistance. So the total resistance is really R2 and R3 connected in parallel because these two resistors they're connected in parallel and the result that you get is added to R1. So if you will, um, the, the the notation that perhaps um, people in, in engineering like to use would be something like this. So let me just show you. So we would typically write this uh, as follows. We would write uh, R, um, sorry about that. Just give me a second. So R total is equal to R1, your first resistor, this one here, plus R2 connected in parallel with R3, right? So, so it's this, it's this thing here, uh, these two, this is what R2 connected in parallel with R3. And we saw the, the, the notation for, for these uh, bars. The two bars mean that uh, the resistors are connected uh, in, in parallel. And this is really what, uh, what your total uh, resistance is, right? This or this is just the same thing, right? So this comes from really from R2 in parallel with R3. We did see a, a, a short way of of doing this, a quick way of doing this, right? So when we said we have two resistors connected in parallel, so let's say we have R2 connected in, in parallel with R3, what we do is we simply uh, multiply the top. So we do R2 multiplied by R3 divided by R2 plus R3. Okay, this is kind of the short uh, uh, cut here. So if you will, this is essentially equal to this thing here. This is just a, a short way, uh, a shorthand notation. It's a shorthand notation. And in fact, we encourage you to always use shorthand notation uh, as a first step and then continue your analysis. Notice that I put it in, in brackets. Uh, the brackets is what will uh, kind of help us um, 
figure out when we solve the, the total resistance. At any rate, this is how you evolve from a, uh, a series circuit to a parallel circuit to a series parallel circuit. Uh, if we now look at in terms of analysis, what are the tools that we typically use with each of them? If you recall with uh, from lecture four that if you have a series circuit, the tool that we use to do the analysis is KVL, Kirchhoff's voltage law. If we have a parallel circuit, we use KCL, Kirchhoff's current law. Right, so the current comes in and it is split, and that's why we use KCL. Here, the voltage here that you have is split between these two different resistors, and that's why we use KVL. Uh, on the other hand, when we have a CV parallel circuit, for analysis, we will use both KVL and KCL. So uh, the uh, subset of the circuit that is connected in series, for that subset, we will use KVL. Right? So, for example, if we look at R1 and the combination of these two together, uh, the split of the voltage between R1 and, and this thing here, this circle here, this one resistor, let's say instead of these two resistors, we change it to one resistor. This combination, the split of voltage between them, will use KVL. And as for the current that goes into R2 and R3, that you will use KCL. So it uses both of them. Uh, and that's why it is more complex. Okay, so maybe we could now look at the voltages. What happens to the voltages? Well, this, uh, again, because of KVL, we notice that the voltage is simply the voltage drop across V1 and V2, and that gives us the total voltage, your, your Vs, the, the voltage from the source. In here, the voltages will be the same because the components are connected in parallel. And in here, the voltages will rather be the voltage uh, that is uh, dropped uh, across uh, resistor 1 plus the voltage that is um, uh, dropped across two or three, right? So V23, this is just a, um, a notation that I did here, uh, basically equals to the voltage across V2 and the voltage across V3. And because they're connected in parallel, they will be equal. So, so this is how it, it will be different with a series parallel circuit. With current, um, the current well will be the same. So if you notice here, the current uh, that you have will be the same everywhere. So the, it's equal to the current in through R1, the same through R2, because they're connected in uh, series. The current here will be split, right? Part of it will come to R1, part of it will go to, R, uh, to R2, and that's why it is split. And the current here, um, maybe what I could do for this one, I could have bit erase this part so I can show you the current. What happens to the current here is uh, as follows. Uh, maybe we could choose the green. So we have the uh, 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 the current that flows, and, and it goes like this, and it goes it goes through resistor one. It comes out of resistor one. It is split between resistor two and resistor three. It goes through resistor two. It goes through resistor three. It re-emerges and it goes back again to the source. Okay. So this is really what happens to the current here. So if you notice here in this case, um, what we could say about the current is that the current is really uh, the, the current from the source, this IDS that comes, leaves the source, uh, leaves a 25 volt source, is really equal to the current that goes into a resistor R1. That's why they're, they're equal. But then this current, this current from the source or this current uh, the, the, that if you want to call it I1, is split between R2 and the current that goes into R3. And that's why it's a split of, of these two. Um, so now maybe we could we could we could show you how KCL and KVL is 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 seen here. So if you see here, your KVL is really seen in this part. This is your KVL. The voltage is is split between the different resistors that are connected in series. Uh, in here, the uh, KCL is seen here. So KCL is seen with this uh, expression here, okay? In here, well, you have both of them. You have KVL and KCL. So KVL is with this expression here. And KCL is with this expression here, okay? Uh, and, and this is what, uh, what what's interesting to notice is that the complexity really increases as we move uh, from these two all the way to this one. Right? So this is what uh, it's more complex. So these two are simple, 
simple simple and this is more complex because the circuit has the combination of both of them okay now uh, another thing that is uh interesting to uh to to see here is what happens when you have different uh, components within the circuit that goes defective so let's say in this case your r1 is defective well you no longer have a circuit right if it's defective it acts like an open circuit the current no longer flows and if it doesn't flow then the circuit is pretty much useless it's not it's not functioning um, the same thing happens if let's say your R2 is defective the circuit is completely gone it's non-functional it's not a closed uh, circuit uh, if you look at the other one if you if let's say R1 is defective in in in, in the parallel circuit well then you still have a current that can flow right the current can leave and it could go through resistor 2 and you still have some flow of current and therefore the circuit is still functional it's not like what you wanted uh, but it is still functional uh, while in here, if any of the components are defective, it's not functional because they're connected in series. Um, if you have, let's say, R2 that is defective, the circuit is still functional and the, the current will flow into, uh, into resistor 1. Uh, so it's still uh, okay. If we look at, let's say, uh, uh, this one here, uh, Electra 6, uh, uh, what we have here today with a series parallel circuit, if, let's say, R2 is defective, the circuit is still functional the current comes in it flows into resistor one it still has a path to flow into resistor three and back to the source if you have resistor three that is defective again the 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 current is still functional and goes into resistor one it goes into resistor two and it goes back to the source however if you have your r1 that is defective well now you have a problem the current can no longer flow because this r1 is connected in series to the source so your current comes in and it goes to the air it acts as an open circuit it's no longer functional so you have to be careful of the meaning of um, uh, of uh, of open circuit uh, uh, by, by components components that are no longer functioning and the impact that it will have on your circuit so anytime you have a parallel component within your circuit you still can survive but anytime you have a series component that is defective, uh, you're no longer surviving, right? It's just the circuit is useless. It's no longer functioning. Um, in real life, in real life, we should we should perhaps mention this, that in real life, you will perhaps see some series circuits, perhaps once in a while see a parallel circuit. But in real life, you'll have more complex circuits and they will in general be a series parallel circuit. So really understanding a series parallel circuit is important. But here we broke it down into lecture four and lecture five so that you really nail down and understand a series circuit. You really nail down and understand a parallel circuit before we move into a series parallel circuit. But really, to be honest with you, at the end of the day, this is what we want. We want to be here. Here, but in order to appreciate this we had to break it into these uh, basic circuits the lecture 4 and the lecture 5 circuits uh, and now hopefully you're you're in good shape to to tackle a CV parallel circuit because this is what you will see in real life this slide here is really a, a review of what we saw in lecture 4 and lecture 5 in lecture 4 we we really went uh, uh, deep and, and, and took the time to, uh, to understand what KVL is. In lecture 5, we did the same thing, but now we looked at KCL. Uh, and, 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 and I think I mentioned before, I mean, these are two uh, uh, major contributions by, by, uh, by Gustav uh, Kirchhoff, uh, the, 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 the person that came up with these two different uh, tools that, that we're using, these two laws that we're using. So I think the really comprehending them is very critical now that we are seriously working on CV parallel circuits. You cannot escape from using both of them. Uh, we will use them extensively with CV parallel circuits. In fact, for the second half of the course, this is one of the key tools that we will always come back to in order to tackle uh, any circuit that we will see. Uh, and, and you'll see that as, as we go through the different courses, through the, the different lectures uh, in the remaining part of the course, in the second half of the course. So anyways, KVL is really the, the voltage drop uh, across a loop and the, the addition of the voltage drops across a loop should be zero. KCL is really the uh, the the current uh, that that comes to a specific node, uh, and uh, currents that come to a node are positive. Currents that leave a node are negative. When you add them together, they should add up to zero. So if we show you some some generic or some some 
example here. So you have a source, you have three resistors, uh, and you we could maybe annotate this. So you'll see that uh, what what is really happening here uh, is that current is leaving the source. Uh, current goes into the resistor one. It goes here. It moves into uh, resistor two. It moves into resistor three. Uh, and then it goes back to the source, right? So this is your VS or the source. In this case, we called it uh, V4. Uh, current is flowing this way. So this here would be your plus. Here's your minus. Here's your plus. Here's your minus. Here's your plus. And here's your minus. So you leave, the current is leaving the source. So therefore, we write minus VS or minus VDC. Uh, it enters the plus of V1. So that's why we write plus uh, V1, it enters the plus of V2, that's why we read plus V2. Uh, it enters the plus of V3, that's why we read plus V3. You do the addition, it should add up to zero. And this is really what uh, KVL tells us to do. So in fact, you could rearrange it. You could, since minus VDC will be a negative value, you could just take it on the other side. And this is really what you get uh, through KVL. Okay, so we could uh, kind of show uh, something uh, related to KCL here. This is an example for uh, for KCL, and um, in this example, what you have is uh, is again you have a node. Uh, KCL is always around a, a node, uh, and in the node you have a current that comes to the node. If a current comes to the node, it's going to be positive. If a current comes to the node, I3 is also coming to the node. It's going to be uh, positive as well. Uh, I4 is leaving the node. So I4 is leaving. It's going to be negative. Uh, I1 is leaving the node. So it's going to be negative. So if you were to write this around uh, this node, you could basically just say that it is uh, I2 okay, uh, plus I3 okay uh minus i4 minus i1 and this should equal to zero okay and that's exactly what you have here because i1 is leaving therefore there's a minus i2 is entering the node it's a plus i3 is entering the node it's a plus i4 is leaving the node it's a minus this should equal to zero if you rearrange it these two are negative you could just put them on the other side You'll just have your I2 plus I3 equals to I1 uh, plus I4 for this node. So for every single node, you could write an expression. This is for this node within a circuit. I could write this expression here. Um, so uh, for every node, you could write a KCL expression. Uh, as for KVL, for every loop, for every loop uh, in a circuit, you could write a KVL expression. This is what uh, where this comes from. Okay, I really hope that you can take the time to uh, to uh, to really comprehend and digest KCL and KVL because if this is not uh, understood in a proper way, uh, and again here I'm just reviewing it. These are things that we really saw in lecture four and in lecture five. Then you'll have serious difficulty in the second half of the course. We'll do more complex stuff. Uh, superposition, Thevenin uh, uh, theorem, uh, we will do uh, more CV parallel circuits, and then after that we'll move into, into capacitance and, uh, and AC circuits and, and all that. So, But at the end of the day, KBL and KCL is essential, and you really need to, to comprehend that. If uh, your midterm wasn't the best, you didn't do that great, and you still think you need help, please go back to lectures four and five, do the problems there go through the problems that are proposed, the extra problems in the book, the extra problems that I posted on Slate, and also the problems that are prepared by the PAL sessions. And to do that so that when the time comes for the final, you are in good shape. So students ask me all the time when uh, they're trying to solve a CV parallel circuit, which equations should they use? Which of the learned lessons from past lectures should they consider? Uh, so, so I made this slide to kind of give you a summary of the key things that you need to focus on when you're trying to solve a CV parallel uh, circuit. So number one, it's Ohm's law. No question about it. Ohm's law is the most fundamental law in electrical engineering. And you need that when you work with any electrical circuit. So certainly Ohm's law is there. You have your voltage, resistance, and current in the relationship between them. The other thing that, that uh, 
may also be useful is, is Watt's law, because quite often when you work with a series parallel circuit, it will ask you to find the voltage uh, dissipated by different components, by different uh, uh, parts of the circuit, by across uh, different terminals uh, of a circuit. And so Watt's law will be is quite powerful as well. Uh, so power is equal to voltage times current, or uh, voltage squared divided by resistance, or uh, current squared times a resistance. So these are the uh, this is Watt's law, and these are the three different ways of, of representing it. Um, uh, of course, there's also the relationship between power and energy. Power is a rate, energy is a quantity, so power is equal to energy divided by time. That's also something that is kind of inherent and enlisted here, but that kind of goes along with, uh, with Watt's law. Uh, another one that is critical, and we just talked about it earlier, it's KVL. So if you look at a certain loop and you take the voltage that is uh, dropped uh, uh, across different elements within a loop, it should add up to zero. Uh, and n in this case is just the number of voltages or the, that you have uh, across a certain loop. In any loop in a circuit, uh, KVL will work with in a series parallel uh, circuit. So, so KVL is a third powerful uh, tool that you need to have in your toolkit when you tackle a series parallel circuit. The fourth one that you need to, to, to have in your toolkit is KCL, and, and we talked about this, you have a node, you have different nodes that, um, uh, different path for the current that comes to the node, and different current that leaves a node, and that also uh, contribute to, uh, uh, to, uh, to, 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 to this relationship for, for KCL. So if a node, uh, if a current goes into the node, that's positive. If a, no, if a current leaves a node, that's negative. Uh, and you add that, and that should add up to zero. And here is the number of branches uh, at a specific node. So for every node, you could, you could have a relationship like this. So KCL is the fourth one that is critical for you to have. Uh, the fifth one that you should also have with uh, with your uh, toolkit is certainly voltage divider rule. So uh, you have you're looking at a certain um, uh, uh, within a loop, uh, and you're looking at the different voltage drops uh, of different elements within the loop, and you could find the voltage across, let's say, the kth resistor. Uh, so what you do is you take the uh, the main voltage, the voltage of the source, uh, and you take the uh, the resistor, that specific resistor, the kth resistor, and you simply divide it by the total resistance. So here within a loop, we're telling you that the total resistance is, uh, there are n resistors, uh, so the total resistance is simply the addition of them. Uh, this is just a generic expression. You could just go back to lecture four to see how a voltage divider rule is used. Uh, the sixth uh, um, a useful tool that you will need uh, with uh, in your toolkit for to solve series parallel circuit is current divider rule. Current divider rule is to find the uh, kth current through the kth branch. Uh, so you need to go from the total current, and then on top you put a small value, which is the total uh, resistance. Total resistance will be smaller than the smallest resistance. Um, and in the bottom, you put the specific resistor related to that path that you're studying. Uh, again, this is a kind of a generic expression for um, a, a, um, a, a, a node with uh, with uh, with n uh, um, with n uh, uh, branches here. So so you have n resistors uh, and uh, n resistors that are connected in parallel. And this is kind of what what we mean here. Um, if it is difficult for you to see five and six. Go back to lecture four here, go back to lecture five, and then that, that will help you uh, comprehend voltage divider rule, current divider rule. In my opinion, these six rules that you have here in front of you will certainly allow you to survive and to thrive in solving a CV parallel circuit. You don't need anything else. Uh, we will see other rules uh, later on, other techniques, but for now, to solve a CV parallel uh, uh, circuit, pretty much these six, six different uh, um, uh, laws and equations and, and, and tricks uh, that we saw, okay? Uh, and that should, that should be it. I don't think you need anything else. We saw in uh, lecture four and in lecture five uh, equivalent circuits. So we essentially could take a look at a certain circuit. We have different components. We could then change that circuit into an equivalent circuit by 
merging various uh, components, various um, resistive elements, let's say that, that we saw in lecture four and five, into just one resistor, and that simplifies the analysis. So here we want to kind of continue along and show you a few examples uh, related to this. Uh, I believe this will be more of a review of what we saw before. So maybe we could read the definition. Um, so an equivalent circuit is one that has characteristics that are electrically the same as another circuit among a particular pair of nodes. So if I look at these two uh, nodes here, and I am curious to know what is the resistance between this node and this node, what is the current that flows into this um, th this 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 path here, this wire here, uh, assuming it's a closed circuit. What is the voltage between these two nodes? Uh, it, I mean, we expect it to be uh, the same. Let's say with this one, if 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 if, for instance, we are told that both of them are the same, so these two are are, are equivalent. We expect the current here, the voltage, and uh, the uh, the resistance to be the same. Uh, and there should be absolutely no major differences, maybe just the tolerance that will play some factor here. Uh, but otherwise, they should be equivalent to each other. Uh, if you look here, in reality, this, this 2K is formed by simply putting two uh, 1Ks together connected in series. Whereas here, we simply took off the shelf a 2K uh, resistor. Um, of course, uh, the, the, the using less component is always more appealing. As engineers, we, we want to make sure that the aesthetic of the circuit that we're putting together is lean. Uh, and um, it's not, we don't have too many components. We could use less components and th that will have the same effect. So if you have the opportunity or the option to use two 1Ks uh, or one 2K, now, perhaps it is better to use a, a one resistor of two gates. So that just goes with uh, with the common sense of, uh, of designing an electrical circuit. But at the end of the day, between these two uh, points, they are equivalent. Okay, so in here, uh, what we essentially did to find the equivalent um, a resistor, it would, would simply be to, to add R1 and R2, and this is what we got our 2K here. Let's look at another example. This is another example. We have two resistors. We have resistor 1, um, which is 1K. We have resistor 2, it's also 1K. Both resistors are connected in parallel. And we could uh, certainly show that the equivalent is um, uh, it's 500 ohms. So instead of putting two resistors of 1K in parallel, we could, in fact, just connect it with just one resistor of 500 ohm. They are absolutely uh, equivalent. Uh, and like we said before, uh, having a leaner circuitry is better. So instead of connecting two resistors, just connect one resistor is certainly better than, than two. Okay, so wh where does this come from? Well, it simply comes from the equation of having two resistors in parallel. So if you do the, uh, the math, uh, maybe we could do it right now. So we could, uh, we could show you this. Um, so the uh, they're called R1 and R2, and if we if we do this right here, so we say R1 is in parallel with uh, R2. Uh, it just happens that both resistance are have the same value, so maybe we could simply call them R0 at R0 in parallel with R0, right? So this is what we mean by R0 that. This one here is equal to R0, and this one here is equal to R0. Okay, so if we have two resistors connected uh, in parallel, what we could do is we could use the shortcut that we showed you before. We multiply the top, so it's R0 times R0, so it becomes R0 squared. And in the bottom, we add them, so it's R0 plus R0, that becomes 2R0. Uh, and now we could simplify, we could simplify a bit, and the result will simply be R0 divided by 2. Okay, so this is what you get. Uh, so if R0 is equal to 1K, what we expect, uh, the, uh, the merger of both will be less than 1K. And in this case, as you can see here, is 500 uh, ohms. Uh, so this is also maybe something that is... Um, Kind of interesting to have in your in your toolkit is to know that anytime you connect two resistors and both resistors that are of equal value the the resultant resistor will be half of that 
right? So if you have two resistors, let's say you put two resistors, uh, one resistor is 3K, the other resistor is 3K, that you put them in parallel, the resultant resistance that you get is 1.5K. I didn't need to do any math here, right? So this is a useful kind of, uh, if you will, identity to add to your toolkit, right? So you could, we, we just showed it here, but, but that's what it is. This is another example that we have here. We have three components, R1, R2, R3. They're uh, assembled together. And uh, what we have is we have access to, uh, to, to, to these two nodes, this node and this node. And instead of having three resistors, we can in fact uh, make it uh, leaner and we could simply use one resistor. So what you notice is R1 and R2, they are connected in series and their result is connected in parallel with R3. So we can certainly uh, uh, modify this and find an equivalent circuit. Um, we, could, uh, we could just add R1 and R2 together. That is 2.7 plus 1. That becomes 3.7K. Uh, so let's just call it R1, 2 or whatever L, whatever, whichever identifier you want to call it. That's fine as well. Uh, and now you have this thing that you have, this 3.7K, and you have the 4.7K, uh, and um, they are... Uh, between each other, you could uh, you could basically just find the um, uh, the the resultant uh, resistance. So you have two resistors. Uh, the resistors are uh, connected in parallel, and the resultant resistor that you get will be smaller than the smallest resistance. So the total resistance should be smaller than 3.7 k. So let's just see. And this is exactly uh, what we got, right? So we got uh, the total resistance of 2.07 kilo ohm. Which is smaller than the smallest one, and that's uh, that's 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 really uh, what what you kind of expected for a sanity check. So now, if you have your DMM and you close the circuit, the current that flows here, the current that flows here, and the current that flows here should be the same. The voltage that you measure here, here, and here should be the same, and also the resistance between these two nodes, these two nodes, and these two nodes should be more or less uh, the same. Right. The I mean, I say more or less just because we are, let's say, factoring in uh, the tolerance of the different components that you have. Right. That, that's pretty much it. A apart from that, everything else should be identical. OK, now uh, maybe we could show you how to write this uh, mathematically, uh, uh, mathematically from the uh, from an electrical engineering point of view. So what, what you have here is you have the following. I'll just try to, to annotate for you so r1 is is this one here r2 is here so you add them together r1 and r2 you put them in bracket okay put them in bracket the result that you get is in parallel is in parallel with r3 the result that you get is in parallel with r3 and this is what you what you have so what you do is you simply add these two together. So 1 plus 2.7, that becomes your um, uh, 3.7. 3.7, you don't need to put K because it's K all the way. So you could add it at the end. In parallel with R3, R3 is 4.7. And now you uh, simply uh, do this uh, for 3.7 in parallel with 4.7. Well, you could just multiply them through. Right? So 3.7 times 4.7 divided by 3.7 plus 4.7 okay and that gives you this will give you the result uh, that you have which is basically uh, here your 2.07 uh, kilo ohm. okay so I think this is very powerful to be able to write uh, a circuit in shorthand notation so I think you should have the capacity to go from an expression like this to a circuit right? so from an expression like this to a circuit and also from a circuit to an expression like this so sometimes in an exam i will give you an expression uh written uh with 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 two bars this uh, if if something is in parallel uh and and i'll ask you to 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 show the circuitry of it or uh, else what i could do is i could give you the circuit and i ask you to write it um a, a, to, to write it in a in an analytical way in a mathematical way like this one here and then once it's written in a mathematical way you could certainly solve it and then determine that the result is whatever 2.07 and then because everything is k the end will also be in kilo
Okay, so I think you should uh, you should have this flexibility to move from circuit to an expression or from an expression to a circuit. We mentioned earlier that KVL is used with a CV circuit, uh, KCL is used with a parallel circuit, and when you work with a CV parallel circuit, you will use both. You will use KCL and KVL. So uh, KVL can be used to for any path that is uh, in series, uh, and KCL can be used for any path that is uh, if you will, in, in parallel. And that's why both of them will be necessary. Now, if we just focus in on KVL for a moment, and let's say you have a circuit. This is a circuit that we give you. If you look at the circuit, this circuit, um, I mean, certainly it's not a series circuit because you have multiple loops. Uh, one loop here, another loop, and a third loop. Uh, also, it is not a parallel circuit because these components are in series, but they are in parallel, and then the result is in parallel. So it's 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 a combination of parallel and series circuits. So it's no longer just a basic parallel circuit. So we know that just by inspection, this is a series parallel circuit. And if we want to apply KVL with a series parallel circuit, uh, there is actually an interesting uh, uh, reality here: is that the path shown will sum up to zero. I mean, that's just really the definition of KVL. If you go through any path, through any closed path, so this is a closed path. If we go through this closed path, we go from the source, we walk all the way to resistor two, to resistor four, to resistor five, resistor six, and back to the source in this path here, and ignore the rest, right? You ignore this R3, you ignore this R1. Within this path, uh, the uh, addition of the, um, uh, of the voltages across this uh, throughout this path will add up to zero volt and this is an interesting result if let's say you're still in the same circuit but now you're looking at a different path right so so we're it's still the same circuit but now we look at this path this path here in this in this loop uh, again if I measure the voltages uh, dropped uh, across the components within this loop the addition of it if I start here, I do the loop and I finish here, it will be zero volts. So no matter which path you take, uh, no matter which um, a close path you take within the circuit, you will have zero. So this loop will have zero, this loop will add up to zero, this loop, the voltages will add up to zero. If I take the outer loop, the voltages will add up to zero. If I take the this one inside these two loops, it will add up to zero. Um, if I take this one with the with with the exterior loop like this, it will add up to zero. This is an interesting uh, reality of how KVL operates with a series parallel circuit, uh, and I think it could be useful uh, if you do analysis analysis with with these sort of circuits. So as we mentioned with a series parallel circuit, we have both capabilities, uh, in fact, both tools that we saw that, that are relevant, KCL and KVL. On the previous slide, we saw how KVL is applied to a series parallel circuit. In this slide, let's see how KCL is applied to a circuit. So we have this circuit here. We have a source, it's five volts. Um, there is a branch. Uh, and, and then you have a resistor of 270 ohms. You have another branch of 470 ohms, and then there's a there's another setup here of, of a, a resistive network. You have three resistors, four, five, and six that are connected in series, and they all these three with R3 are connected in parallel. And then the loop goes back again to the source. Um, and you have these boxes that you see now. These boxes, if you see, I wrote to you DMM. Uh, which is basically a digital multimeter. Uh, they are your measurement tool. If you want, you know, the it's like an ammeter that you have. It tells you how much current is flowing in this specific wire. So don't forget, current is always uh, through. Voltage is always across. So if you want to find the current through a specific path, you need to cut the path and, and have the DMM be part of the circuit. And that's exactly what we did here. We have three different DMMs. And we made it part of the circuit. We break the circuit, we put one DMM here. We break the circuit, we put one DMM here. We break the circuit, we put another DMM here. And this should give us the reading of, uh, of what we have in the circuit. I think it's always, <clears throat> yeah, sorry. I think it's always a good practice to, to show the path of uh, the current. So maybe we could do this uh, right now. So let's just, let's just do it. Um, let's pick this color. 
So you have your uh, current that leaves uh, that leaves the source. Okay. So it it leaves like this. It travels upward, upward, and then it goes here. It goes through the DMM. It leaves the DMM at this point. At this juncture, uh, at point A. This is an important junction uh, juncture here. It then is split. Part of the current will come uh, here on this path, on this branch, and another part will go to the other branch. So it goes through the DMM, it leaves the DMM, it goes through the DMM, it leaves the DMM, it goes to the resistor R1, and it's here. Let's look at the other path. It goes into resistor R2. From resistor R2, it then reaches this other juncture here. Uh, maybe we could call it B. The one that's called A, let's call it B. And then at this point, this current that comes here is split. So part of it will go to resistor R4, leaves R4, goes to resistor R5, leaves R5, goes to resistor R6, leaves R6, and it goes back to this junction juncture here. Uh, the remaining part of the current that, uh, that arrives to juncture B uh, goes to uh, resistor 3, comes here, comes here, it re-emerges. So the current that you have at this point, right, the current that you have here, and the current that you have here should be the same. right? So because it's you know, it split and it kind of re-emerges again, and it arrives here. Now this current with this current should be the same current that you have here. So whatever you have here, what here you should get basically the same current and then you go back uh, to the source okay so it's always a healthy way to to figure out um, what uh, while it's trying to solve a circuit a series parallel circuit a parallel circuit a series circuit to 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 trace the path of the current and and like we said before when you trace the path of the current this will also help you to figure out what are the different values for how do you how do you measure the voltage across a resistor so because the the current is flowing this way you could put your plus here your minus here this would be your v1 uh current's flowing this way you could put your plus here your minus here this would be your v2 current is flowing that way plus is here minus here this is your v4 uh so this is a four not a nine plus here, minus here, this is your V5, and uh, plus here, minus here, and this is your V6. Uh, and we also have a plus here, a minus here, and this would be your uh, V3. Okay, uh, I think we have all the different voltages uh, that are necessary here. And of course, you have your source here, the plus is here, the minus is here, and, and you have the value for Vs. Okay, so um, the, the as for the different currents, well, the current that you have here, the current that you're going to measure with this DMM is the current that flows here, right? This this current, this current that flows into resistor 1, so it's basically I1. So this will measure I1. Um, this current here, this DMM, it will measure the current that flows into this resistor, this resistor, this current here, I2. So this will give you the reading of I2. Uh, and this current is the current that flows out of the source. So we could simply call it I source, uh, or we could also call it I total. It doesn't really matter. I, I source, I total. Uh, so let's just do that. Sorry about that. Let's see. For some reason I have difficulty doing that, but okay. Or we could also call it I total. Okay, and I total is essentially the, the addition of I1 and I2, right? So we could just write it here. So I S, or if you will, I total is the addition of I1 plus I2. And this comes from KCL. So when you have this kind of uh, circuit, annotating would be the first thing to do. Uh, when you try to tackle the circuit, but um, then in order to find to, to continue solving the circuit, well, you need to have a strategy. So in here, the question that we ask you is really to figure out these currents. This this current uh, I, I total, what is it? We don't know what it is. This current I two, what is it? We don't know what it is. 
And then the same thing with I1. We don't know what it is. This is basically the question that we're asking you here. So first thing first, annotate your circuit. Figure out the path that trades for the current. Uh, the second thing is maybe identify the voltages as well. I mean, that, that helps you sometimes because sometimes we also ask you to find certain voltages in a circuit. And then the third thing is really to figure out what are the, what is the question. So the question here is to find these three different currents that the DMMs will read. So now you have a circuit. This circuit is pretty complex. It's not an easy circuit. There's a lot of uh, components and there's a lot of um, path to it. So the strategy after doing uh, what we did would be to try to simplify the circuit and bring it down to something of an equivalent circuit, something easier to, to analyze, something easier to digest. So what we could do is maybe we could um, we could shrink it down and find the equivalent resistance. So if you have, maybe I could show it to you with a, with a, here. So essentially what we're trying to say is, what if we take all these different resistors, all of them, and we just, instead of all these different, uh, I don't know how many resistors we have, one, two, three, four, five, six, six resistors, and we change all of them by only one resistor. Let's call it E equivalent. Sometimes we might call it R total. Right? How do we do that? How can we change all these resistors by just one resistor? Uh, and once we do that, this will help us to figure out what I total is, because we will simply have a basic circuit, just a source, just one resistor, and we could just use Ohm's law, uh, and we could just use Ohm's law, and this will help us to figure out what is the current here. What is the current that is flowing out of the source? And if we find the current flowing out of the source, we basically found our IT. And once we find IT, then we can find everything else, I1 and I2, right? So this is the strategy, is once you have a circuit, annotate. Once you finish annotating, find the total resistance. So, and when you find the total resistance, you always go to the other extremity of the, of the circuit, the other end of the circuit, and you work backward. So you go from here, and then you work your way backward toward the source. Okay, this is how you get your total resistance. So if you see here, how do you find the total resistance? Well, again, we go through this strategy. You go to the end of the circuit and you work backward toward the source. Look at this. You have your R4, this guy here. You have your R5, this other resistor here. And you have your R6. And ask yourself, how are they connected with each other? R4, R5, R6. Well, simply by observing it, uh, they are connected in series. So you could simply add them. You could add R4, R5, and R6 and replace it by one resistor. One resistor, and that's going to be your uh, uh, the, the total resistance in this branch. Now, this resistor that you got, right, in R3, they are in parallel. They are in parallel. So you could certainly find that as well. Uh, so it would be R3 in parallel with the combination of R4, R5, R6. And now this with R2 would simply be added. So you could simply, so you see how you do it? You do it gradually, one step at a time, and then you'll be able to find the total resistance in this branch. Total resistance in this branch. So let's just do it. Uh, so this is type, so I'm going to just show you to how um, we, we get it. So if you see here, if you see here, it's a, it's, it's a bit messy. There's a lot uh, going on. But if you see here, uh, this area, this shaded area, is what this expression it tells you. Right? So how do you read this expression? You read it like this. You have R4, R5, R6, R4, R5, R6 that are connected in series. Therefore, you add them together. And then this value with R3, they are connected in parallel. Therefore, you, you put these two bars for parallel um, uh, in order to, to, to do the parallel computation between R3 and these three. And don't forget your brackets. Brackets are there not for decoration. We don't put brackets for decoration. I, I notice sometimes in, in exam students don't put brackets when they analyze a, a, a resistive circuit uh, or a series parallel circuit. You need to use your, your brackets. Brackets guide you into figuring out how to, do, how to compute the total resistance. So we don't forget your brackets here. You're doing this. You're adding these three together. Put your bracket. Then you're saying this with R3 are in parallel. Then, I mean, you need another bracket around this. So you can put the, the curly brackets around R3 in parallel with the combination of these three resistors. And now that you got this, 
uh, you could it, it becomes just one resistor you could change all of these four resistors into one resistor this thing here with r2 is in series so you could add them together and that gives you r0 r0 is this shaded area all of this this is your r0 so if you do the math you do the math i'm not going to do it here we don't have too much space you'll get 627 so i mean how did we get 627 this is what we did we did 100 plus 100 plus 100 r, uh, r4 plus r5 plus r6 so this gives us uh 300 300 in parallel with 330 so you do 300 in parallel with 330 you do 330 times 300 divided by 330 plus uh, th uh, uh, 300 that gives you the value for here the value that you got here then you add it to 470 and this is where we get this 627 ohm so all of this could be replaced by just one resistor of 627 ohm now that we have this um, what we could do is we will then have the a resistor r not let's just call it a name r not right r not an intermediate resistor r not that changes all this into one resistor with r1 will be in parallel so you could simply uh, do the parallel computation of R1, 270, in parallel with 627, and you do the math, and you get 189. So the total resistance, this total resistance that you have, this 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 red circle around this this resistive network, all of it together is only 189 ohms. So that's incredible. So we were able to find the total resistance. Now that we have the total resistance, we could create a, a, an equivalent circuit, a circuit. Uh, that is simple we have the total resistance we have a source of five volts and we want to figure out what is the current that leaves the source and enters this resistive network or this total resistance so you can simply use ohm's law you have the voltage you have the resistance you don't have the current you could simply use ohm's law and through ohm's law we determine that this current this current is 26.5 uh, milliamp so we're already uh, doing great here at this point we we did uh, we did uh, we did great we 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 were able to find this current now that we have this current uh we're still missing two parts where we don't know what this current is and we don't know what the other current is but for these two you could simply use uh, for one or the other uh, you can simply use the current divider rule in fact you are recommended to always look at the both branches look at this branch and look at the other branch which, which one looks nicer and easier to analyze? Well, if you look at it, this is a messy branch. There's a lot of uh, components and it's uh, it's gonna break your head to, to fix it, uh, to, to solve this. Uh, it's solvable, but uh, why work hard, right? So try to be more efficient with your analysis. So uh, working with this branch would be way easier to do it, right? So to, because you only have one resistor and you wanna figure out this current. So you could use current uh, divider rule uh, I1 would equal to I total, which is 26.5. You do a ratio of small over large. Small will be the total resistance. It would be this thing here, R0 with R1 in parallel, divided by this resistor. So if we, if we show it to you, this is basically what's going to happen. You'll have something like this. Uh, so it's the total uh, current, which is 26.5. You do a ratio of the total resistance, all of this in parallel with R1, that's their total resistance. And in the bottom, you put the resistor related to this. This is this is basically current divider rule. I wrote it to you here, current divider rule. And anyways, you do the ratio and you figure out that the current here that flows in this branch is 18.5 milliamp. So if you have 26.5 milliamp here, and this guy here, this branch can, uh, will have a, a current of 18.5, well, think about it. How many current? How many currents? Um, how many amps do you have left? Uh, the the remaining amps is what flows in this path, and that's that's pretty much it, right? I mean, you'll be that's it. You you've solved everything related to this question, um, and you could you know how to do this because of KCL, the current uh, uh, Kirchhoff's current law, right? So if we do that, we've determined that KCL uh, it will give us eight milliamps. Right? So if you add 18.5 plus 8, that gives you back your 26.5. Okay, so that's pretty much uh, everything that, that we were looking for, and we were able to answer it. And if you look at the tools that we use, we use Ohm's Law. So you can't escape uh, from uh, from Ohm's Law. You'll, you'll end up using it all the time. We use the current divider rule. It was very useful for us, so we did end up using it. And we also use KCL.
in this example. Sometimes we might ask you to find voltages. In that point, maybe we'll, we'll end up using KVL as well. Okay. This is a type of question that we've seen uh, before where we uh, provide a circuit and we're asked to fill in uh, a, a related table with the different parameters uh, uh, and measurements around the circuit for the different components. So uh, in this column, we ask you to find the different current through the different uh, resistors that you have, uh, the, the total resistance, the uh, voltage across the different components, and the power dissipated by the different uh, resistive components that you have. Um, so, uh, I mean, we've seen this before with a series uh, circuit. We've seen this before with a parallel circuit. But in this case, this is not a series circuit. This is not a parallel circuit. This is a series parallel circuit. So it has a bit of complexity. Um, the complexity where it arises is that you need to have the eye to figure out which of the six tools that we discussed you will need to use, right? So we saw uh, earlier that you, you you have this this feasible set of uh, of of these really six tools, right? So it's either Ohm's law or uh, it's uh, KVL, KCL, voltage divided rule, current divided rule, or Watt's law. Uh, and you're going to just mix and match between them to figure out what you need uh, and how you could get to the answer as quickly as possible. Uh, there will be different paths to get to the answer. Uh, again, try to find the, the shortest path. And, and this comes in with experience. So let's go through this and we'll see how, how to do it. I think as a first step, it is not a bad idea to first um, annotate the, uh, the circuit. Uh, so maybe we could do this right now. And so you have your source, you have current that leaves the source, it uh, goes uh, into the wire as such, uh, it goes into resistor 1, uh, from resistor 1 it then is, is splits at this juncture, uh, part of it will go to resistor 2, part of it will go to resistor 3, it comes out from the other side, uh, it merges back again, and the current uh, from the source goes back again to the source. Okay, uh, and because the path of the current is like this, we can certainly determine the different uh, related voltages. So in this case, this is your V1, this is your uh, V2, uh, and you have also here your uh, V3. And one thing that you could right away identify is that V2 and V3 uh, will be identical, so they will be the same. So V2 and V3 will really be uh, the same. So in fact, we could just um, maybe give it a name. Let's just call it V0. And we say V0 is equal to V2, uh, which is equal to V3. Okay? Um, so so that's that's the, the first thing that we do. The next thing that we could do is perhaps determine what is the uh, total resistance. So if you see here, we're interested to determine the total resistance. And for the total resistance, what we could do, uh, we could certainly um, uh, look at the, the circuit that we have at hand. Uh, and uh, essentially by total resistance, it means that we want to figure out if, if we look at this entire collection of uh, of resistors, this network resistance, uh, this the, the the this collection of resistors, this uh, and we want to change that by only one resistor. What would we do in that case? This is basically our R total. So for R total, well, we could certainly uh, write an expression for it, and then once we write a mathematical expression, we could then attempt to solve uh, the that. So we could simply write R T. Sometimes we write it as R equivalent. Uh, it is equal to uh, this resistor here, R2, and this resistor here. Uh, if you notice, they're connected in parallel. They have two nodes um, uh, th that are common to both of them, and so they are in parallel. So we could simply write that R2 is in parallel with R3. Don't forget to put your bracket. This kind of guides you into solving the, the value later on with the brackets. Uh, then this uh, two resistors that are in parallel is then added to resistor R1. It's added to resistor R1. And this basically gives you the equation for your total resistance. Uh, and now that you have this expression, you can certainly uh, determine the total resistance. Maybe as a first step, we could determine what this uh, this uh, part is this um, the, this part here. Uh, so maybe we could give it a name. Let's call it R naught uh, is equal to R2 in parallel with R3. Uh, and this is nothing else but uh, the resistor uh, of R2, which is 330 ohms. 
in parallel with uh, 470 ohms. Okay, and we know from the shortcut that we learned uh, in lecture five that we could simply multiply the resistors uh, on top in the numerator and in the denominator, which is simply add them. So we do three, uh, 330 times 470, and then in the bottom, we just do 330 plus 470. Uh, and let's just uh, determine this. So 330 plus 470, uh, that becomes 800 in the bottom. And on top, uh, we could uh, maybe use a calculator to, to go a bit faster. So 330, 330 times uh, 470, and this gives us um, 155100. Uh, we could cancel the uh, the zeros that we have, so that that could simplify uh, what we uh, what we have here. And if we do the uh, the the division, so we do 1,551 divided by eight, and this should give us 193. Uh, 100. Uh, maybe we could uh, put it in the same color. 193. 0.88, 0 0.88 ohm, or if you will, we could simply write it as a, approximately 194 ohm. So this is with three significant digits. Okay, so this is 194 ohm is the collection of uh, uh, of these two resistors together. So maybe, maybe we could use this color these two resistors together. If I look at them together, this we call it R0, is what this value is. This is your R0, okay? 194. Does it make sense um, if we do a quick sanity check? In reality, it does, because it is smaller than the smallest resistance. The smallest resistance between R2 and R3 is 330. So this is uh, smaller than 330. Uh, and so it's uh, it, it does work. It is smaller than the smallest resistance, and that takes care of this, this area that is um, that, that we just highlighted in red. Okay, now to find the total resistance, what we do is we take this value, this 194, we add it to uh, resistor 1, which is uh, 270, and uh, th that result, this result that, that we get, so 194 plus uh, 270, this is what you would write uh, for our total. Right? So this is what you would put here for our total. So this value is what we expect to be uh, 400 and uh, 64. So we could we could verify and to see if this is indeed correct. And it is indeed uh, correct. Okay. So that's that's the first step that, that we did is we determined the total resistance. With this uh, uh, in hand, we could s certainly uh, then perhaps determine the total uh, current by looking at the equivalent circuit. So I'll, I'll explain what this means. Uh, but before that, let's just uh, clean up a bit uh, some of the um, some of the, the, this area so we could do some calculation with the next step okay so what we could do is uh, as follows we could uh, determine this one here i total and if you look at it, your I total that you have, it's really here, right? So this is your I total. Is the total resistance, uh, is the total, uh, sorry about that, the total current that leaves, uh, that, that is, um, that is, if you will, uh, comes out of the, uh, the, the, uh, the DC source. And in fact, this I total is the same current that you have uh, that goes through resistor one, I1. So in reality, this I total is also equal to I1. Okay, my total is equal to I1. So this is also an interest, another interesting observation that we make, which basically means that these two, I1 and I total, are the same. They will be equal. Now the question is, how do you determine them? Well, one way to, to see this is to uh, uh, show that this circuit can be represented by its equivalent circuit. This entire circuit can be shown by an equivalent circuit, where the equivalent circuit is just made up of a source, of 10 volts and it's made up of just one resistor instead of having these three resistors connected in a series parallel way we just have one resistor and this resistor is our total this our total that that we found here 
okay and the current that comes here this is your i total okay so just by looking at this we can simply uh, certainly find i total i total we just apply uh, ohm's law and that's equal to your 10 volts divided by the total resistance that we just got this one here right so it's 464 and if we do the uh, the calculation so we do 10 divided by uh, 464 this gives us a value of 21.6 milliamps so this gives us a, a value of 21.6 milliamps and like we said this value is also the same um, the same for i1 so it's just the same uh, for both of them i total and i1 and so we could simply enter it here and we could enter it here so let's let's see if this is indeed correct it is 21.6 and it is also 21.6 for both of them okay so at this point we got this far uh, as well the next thing that we could do is uh, perhaps determine the um the uh, the, the voltage uh, v1 Right? we could determine this voltage right this voltage here uh we can certainly do that it's, it shouldn't be that hard because we have the resistance we have the current we just multiply them through and that gives us our v1 so we could just do it uh, automatically so 21 point uh, so we could just do 21.6 um so 21.6 times uh, 270 and that gives us 5.83 uh, volts so v1 should be 5.83 or 82 because of rounding error volts so that's uh, great the other thing that we could determine is we could certainly determine the voltage v2 and v3 now if you want to determine the voltage v2 and v3 well first of all we know that they will be equal we just highlighted it here um uh, you could you could uh, you could use uh, uh, Kirchhoff's uh, KVL right you could use uh, KVL to see this uh, in fact what you could do is you could do another equivalent circuit you could say um, uh, th that this circuit that we got we could show it by an equivalent circuit with a source of 10 volts so a source of 10 volts we have a resistor R1 uh, which is equal to 270 and instead of having two resistors connected in parallel we can simply connect one resistor and let's call it r naught right in this r naught we determined earlier uh, it was um i believe uh, 194 uh, uh, ohms right so we determined this earlier which basically means that this this uh, resistance is the collection of um of these two guys together right? so if i merge these two guys together this is what this uh, this R naught is. Okay. Now uh, I, I certainly know certain information here. I know that this uh, resistor will consume 5.82, 5.82, and if this one consumes 5.82 and this is 10 volts, I could certainly find the voltage here, right? So uh, I could certainly find the voltage here. Uh, we could we just call it V naught, and V naught will will be. Um, I don't really have space, so if you allow me, I'm going to just erase some stuff. Gonna erase this thing here. This uh, V naught. Will equal to uh, V S. The value of the uh, DC source minus V one. Right. It's it's really your 10 volts minus 5.82 and the uh, what you end up getting uh, which is 4.18 volts it's what we got because of kvl right so here we use kvl right so notice that we're using different tools as we go along so now we really have v naught and if you have v naught if you have this voltage we said that it will be the same thing for V2 and V3, right? It will be the same. So in fact, you right now you determine this one and you determine this one. So let's just check if it if this is correct. It is 4.18 uh, uh, indeed uh, for both of them. At this point, what we have left is really to determine I2 and uh, uh, I3. And to do that, I might just need uh, a bit more space. So we'll just erase yet again. Uh, and we will uh, show you how to determine these two values uh, as well.
So we're gradually uh, converging into uh, into determining all that we need for this table. Uh, and of course, the, for the power, you do that at the end. You don't do this uh, before because for power, you just need any of these two values uh, between voltage, resistance, and current. You just need any two of them, and you'll be able to find the power using Watt's law. So now let's just see how to determine uh, this one here, I2, and this one here, I3. Um, and but perhaps we can just clean up a bit this area because we got it. And we got this one. So we need to find I2 and I3. So for I2 and for I3, uh, what, uh, what it is, is basically the, uh, the, the this current here, we said it is your I1, which is also equal to your I total, that comes into this junction, and it is split. So what you have here, this is your I2, because it goes through resistor 2, and this is your I3. So this is what we want to know. Now, just by looking at it and through KCL, Kirchhoff's current law, we know that I uh, total or I1 is equal to I2 plus I3. It is just by looking at the circuit and through KCL. So at this node, this is really, at this node here, this is really what's happening. You have a current of I total that comes in, and this current is split between I2 and I3. Okay, um, so now the question is, how do you de determine that? One approach would be to determine I2 or I3 using current uh, divider rule, and certainly you could do that, but it will be too much work for uh, for no reason, right? We always want to want you to to come to the to converge to the answer quickly. So perhaps a smarter way would be to simply use Ohm's law. You have the resistance, you have the voltage. You could you simply use Ohm's law to determine your I2. So I2 simply through Ohm's law. Uh, would be the voltage V2 divided by resistance R2. And this is uh, nothing else but 4.18 divided by 330. Uh, and if we do the calculation, so 4.18 divided by 330, this gives us an answer of 12.7 uh, milliamps. So this gives us 12.7 milliamps for I2. Um, and this is what we uh, should get here. As for I3, well, for I3, uh, you could also use Ohm's law, or you could simply uh, go through the reality of KCL, right? You could go through KCL. You know this value. It is 12.7 milliamp. You know the total. Uh, it is 21.6. You could simply find I, I3. I3 is, uh, is nothing else but I total minus I2, right? So I total is uh, 21.6 minus i2 which is um what we just determined which is 12.7 right so it is simply uh, this difference that that you have and if you if you uh, do the calculation you get a value of 8.9 milliamps so your i3 is 8.9 milliamps okay so let's see if this is indeed uh, correct so we have 12.7 for I2 and 8.9 milliamps. Uh, what we have left at this point is to determine uh, the uh, the power, P1, P2, P3, and the total power. And, and for that, like we said, we could simply use uh, Watt's law. So Watt's law tells us that, that we have um, uh, you know, the, the, the three equations that we know, so P is equal to uh, VI, that's the easiest one, or P is equal to V squared divided by R, or P is equal to I squared R. So you could use whichever you want. Uh, certainly, if you, you have all three of them, you have the current, you have the resistance, you have the voltage for all of them. So the smartest way would be really to use this one. You will, it's less uh, computationally expensive. This you have to do a squaring, so that takes time. You have to do a squaring, it takes time. This is the smartest. You could simply uh, take the voltage, you multiply by the current, and that gives you your P1, your P2, your P3, and you could also do it for P total. You take the uh, the resistor, uh, the the current here, right? And you could also take the voltage. Or else, what you could do is you could simply add all these three, and that also gives you your your P total. Okay. So if we do that, uh, this is what we get: uh, 21 
126 uh, milliwatt. Uh, the milli here that you see is because of milliamps. Uh, if you do it for the uh, for resistor two is 53.1 milliwatt, for resistor uh, three is 37.7, and for the total, you like we said, we could simply add that or else you could simply multiply these two guys together and you'll get uh, a, a total dissipated power of 20, uh, 216 milliwatts, okay? Uh, maybe one other thing that we could uh, mention to you here is that you could certainly see your KCL here, right? So this is your KCL uh, and this is your KCL at this node, right? So if you add the current through resistor two, or I2, the current through resistor three, and these two addition will give you your total current or your I1. Your, that, that's how you see KCL here. And you could also see your KVL here in the table. So KVL is the power that is uh, uh, that is dropped here. The power, uh, the voltage drop for resistor one uh, is 5.82, and the voltage drop by for resistor two and three should be the same for 18. You add them together, that gives you your total 10 volts. So this is also your, your KVL. So as you notice with the C repellent circuit, both of them are used KVL and uh, KCL. Question two, we ask you, what is the voltage across uh, R3, resistor three? What is the voltage here at the output? Uh, so it's a loaded voltage divider. Um, this is the output and you're connecting a component to it. The component will not uh, consume uh, voltage. The voltage is the same. It will take the same voltage as R as R2. The only thing that it will uh, suck out of the circuit is really current. So it will take uh, uh, this load that you're putting here. It will take current from the circuit. Uh, these are your terminals. You see this terminal here, this terminal here, and this is the load that you're connecting to the circuit. Okay. And we're asking what is the uh, voltage across R2. To be honest, we don't need to do, uh, I mean, just through observation, you know that the voltage here will be exactly the same voltage as this one here, okay? So let's see how uh, we could uh, analyze this. Um, I think it's always a good practice to annotate, so let's uh, do that on the circuit. You have your current that leaves uh, the source. It goes into resistor one. It comes to this junction. From this junction, uh, the current is split, part of it goes to the load, load R3, okay, and it comes here, uh, and then you have the, the part that goes through R2, it comes here, it, it re-emerges together, and it's back to the source, okay. This is your junction here, uh, and this is another junction. Uh, the terminals where you have your output, this is here, this is, let's say terminal A, this is another terminal, terminal B, and this is uh, what is referred to as the load. The, the load that is connected to the uh, to the to the circuit, uh, and this is the load current. So here, what you have here in this wire, this is known as the load current. So you're reducing current from this uh, from the circuit because the load is is going to consume certain um, is going to is going to require certain uh, amps from from your circuit to uh, to be uh, to be to make the, to, to, to basically go through a resistor three. And now we're interested to find what is the voltage across resistor three. So voltage across resistor three, we could just call it, so it's gonna be V3. Voltage across resistor two is called V2, okay? And voltage across resistor one is just V1. So let's see what we could do uh, in this case. Um, the uh, perhaps w the 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 w one possibility would be to find a, an equivalent circuit to this. So an equivalent circuit could be um, uh, something like this. So I'll just draw it for you uh, in here. Let's use a maybe this other color. So we have a source, okay, and we have the resistor R1. And we have some resistor R0. Okay. And we come here. And this is what we have. So this thing here that you see, that, that I, this, this new circuit that I showed you, this is an equivalent circuit. The source is still uh, 15 volts. 15 volts. Okay. The resistance, well, this one is R1. So it's R1 equals to uh, 330 ohms. 
R naught is uh, essentially the combination of um, these two together in, in parallel. It's R2 and R3 in parallel. So it's, it's just that. Uh, so R naught is equal to uh, R2 in parallel with R3. Okay, and the voltage that you have here, the voltage that you will have uh, across R0, this voltage, let's call it V0, is the same voltage that you have for V2 and uh, for V3. So V0 will equal to the voltage for V2 and it will equal to the voltage V3. It has to be the same. So what you could then apply then in this case would simply be to uh, to apply a, a, um, a the, the voltage divider rule and to find V naught. But before you do that, let's just determine what is the value of R naught. So R naught is just R two in parallel with R three. So you have that. Um, uh, so let's just try it. So R naught is R two in parallel with R three. You have four hundred and seventy and 2.2k be careful here make sure that everything is with the same units you could either put everything in k's so you could work with k's or you could work with straight ohms in this case we put everything in ohms and we do the calculation otherwise you could have changed this to 0.47k and you could do the analysis and the result will be in kilo but here this is what we did so we multiply the resistance value, so 470 by 2200, and in the bottom we add them, 470 plus 2200, do the ratio and we get 387 ohms. So R naught, this thing here, is 387 ohms. So maybe we could write it uh, in this circuit. So this is equal to 387 ohms. 87 and at this point uh, we could right away find our um, uh, V naught the the voltage that is dropped here by simply uh, uh, applying a, a voltage divider rule this V naught we could just apply voltage divider rule we have the source which is 15 volts we do a ratio of the uh, resistance uh, of this location uh, the resistance related to this voltage which is 387 and in the bottom we do the the addition of the total resistance so it's r1 plus r the, this r naught that we found so it's 387 plus 300, 330 do the math and we figure out that it is um, in fact uh, 810 volts so you see how we were able to, to solve this because of the different tools that we have in mind. And we said you always have to go back to the different tools and, and then figure out which one do you need for the particular question that you have. Is it Ohm's law? Is it Watt's law? Is it KVL? Is it KCL? Is it current divider rule? Is it voltage divider rule? And that should get you to the answer. The following are two key uh, terms, uh, loading and uh, load current. Uh, so in, in, in a nutshell, you have terminals to a main circuit uh, and if some element some some load is connected to this terminal uh, it will not impact the voltage the volt voltage will remain uh, as is however it will uh, reduce the the current from the circuit so if you if you see here we tell you that loading is the effect on a circuit when an element draws current from the circuit in uh, that is connected across the the terminals so we saw that in in previous example and load current is that current that quantity of current that is uh, that goes into a load okay so these are the the kind of two new concepts that we want to uh, give you in the key terminologies however the rest are, are things that we've seen in other lectures so uh, the key terminologies uh, is uh, in definitions is short for this lecture in the lecture, uh, we solved some six to seven problems, and here we're going to show you some other four problems in multiple choice format, uh, and hopefully this will help you better comprehend the, the uh, CV parallel circuit. So let's go through this question. Question one, two circuits that are equivalent between a pair of nodes have the same what? So uh, so we're telling you, the, consider two circuits. Uh, and we're, we're, we're telling you as well that these two circuits are considered equivalent, right? They're considered equivalent, not everywhere, 
right? We're with a particular pair of notes. Uh, they, you cannot have two circuits that are equivalent uh, if, if uh, across different parts of it. With a particular pair of notes, they are equivalent. And then we ask you to, to choose this. So maybe for context, I'm going to just show you an example. Um, so let's let's maybe consider um, this uh, this example here. So say we have a source, just some some source here. So you have a source. Uh, let's just call it VS. You have uh, a branch that comes in. You have a resistor. Let's call it R1. Then it has another branch that comes in. Um, maybe we could have another resistor, R2. Uh, and let's say this resistor, uh, there's also uh, a, a parallel resistance that is connected to this. Uh, so let's maybe call it R3. We have another resistor, R4. And this comes like this. This comes here. And we close up here and always good practice to show your the ground as well. So you have a bunch of resistors here, R1, R2, R3, R4. And this is what you have. And let's consider maybe these two nodes. So let's just maybe put um, a different color. Let's use red. Uh, so you have, we're asking you between this pair of node here and this pair of node here, right? So uh, that that we're that we are doing the uh, uh, we're testing it between these two pair of nodes. Um, so let's now look at another circuit, another equivalent circuit. So let's maybe consider just a source, some source VS, and I don't know, maybe just one resistor uh, like this. We have your ground. This is closed. R equivalent, or if you will, R total. Okay, and you have your your uh, the same pair of nodes uh, that uh, the, the the where we're we're measuring the uh, we're doing the uh, we're measuring the different parameters uh, between these two pair of nodes. Okay, so now we ask ourselves, uh, and and on top of that, maybe I forgot to mention, on top of that, we are telling us that these two uh, circuits are equivalent. Right? So they they are equivalent. They're equivalent. So if we go through the uh, the question, um, so we have two circuits. So this is your first one. This is your second circuit. Okay, that are equivalent, right? Between a pair of nodes, right? Between a pair of nodes. So we're saying that they are equivalent between this pair of node and this pair of node. Okay, between a pair of nodes. Uh, and then we say, if this is the case, which one of these three is correct? So um, let's go through the, uh, the different options. So the number of components between these two pair of nodes is, is, is the same, right? So we'll have the same number of components. Well, that's not very true, right? Because if you count the number of components, so let's, let's do the count of the number of components here. You have, so the, you have node A, you have node B, you have node A, you have node B, and we ask you how many components do you have here? Well, you only have one component. So, and we ask you how many components do you have here? You have one, you have two, you have three, you have four. You have four components. So that's not the, that's that's not the same. So the number of components is not true. If you have two circuits that are equivalent between a pair of uh, nodes, node A and B, the number of components is not the same. So clearly, this is not uh, true. B, the response to an electric stimulus uh, should should be so between two nodes will have the same the same response to an electric stimulus. So if you look here, where where is your electric stimulus? Well, it is your source. So this is your electric stimulus. This is the the energy source for your circuit, right? And if we maybe um, uh, uh, figure out what are the what are the electrics the what is it what do we mean by response response are the three things that we discussed before so basically the current that flows here the current that flows here and the current that flows here are they the same uh clearly they're the same because they leave the same source and the source is the same value their equivalent so they are the same the voltage that you have here between node a and b the voltage that you have here 
and the voltage that you have here between node A and B, are they the same? Yes, they are in fact the same. In fact, that is equal to Vs. And also, if you take a DMM and you measure the resistance between A and B, the resistance between A and B, maybe we could uh, use it with a different color here. The resistance between A and B, uh, so sometimes we do an arrow and we say R equivalent like this, and R equivalent between A and B. Is it the same? Yes, it is the same, right? So this resistance is equal to the collection of these resistors, right? So in this case, it would be R3, R3 in parallel with R4, put it in brackets, like we said, we always look at it from the end of the circuit and we go all the way back to the source, uh, plus R2, then all of this is in parallel with R1. And this is your R total or R equivalent. So the resistance should be the same, right? If you do this math here and this, you will end up getting the same resistance. So B is really the correct one. The response to an electric stimulus will be the same. So the response, we mean the voltage, the current, and the resistance will be the same. So based on what we notice here, B is the correct answer. C, none of the above, this is also not true. So the answer should be uh, B. Now here, you didn't need to do all that I just did here. I just wanted to explain more and we're teaching here and that's why I showed you through an example. But otherwise, you could have just answered this quickly with B. But I think when you put it in context with an example, it, it helps you visualize and it captivates your imagination as you try to figure out the answer. So let's see if we got B and it is correct. Next question, question two, if a series equivalent circuit is drawn from a complex circuit, uh, the equivalent circuit can be analyzed with which one? So the, maybe we could take it uh, a bit slowly here. So we're telling us that we have a complex circuit and by definition, a circuit is complex when it's not a series circuit, when it's not a parallel circuit, it is a combination of both. It's a series parallel circuit. As soon as you have both of them, then we refer to it as complex circuit. And we're telling us that if you imagine you have this kind of circuit and you want to suddenly you want to simplify it because you want to you want to be able to solve the circuit. You, you have to simplify it and you simplify it to some series equivalent circuit. Uh, once you have it in series circuit, which one would we use? So maybe I could um, try to, to kind of help you uh, understand better by showing you an example. So maybe we could show you this, this example here. Uh, let's, 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 let's consider, um, let's consider this, the circuit. So say we have a source, some source VS, and we have um, maybe a resistor. Uh, resistor R1 here, connected straight uh, right after the source, and then we have a branch. The branch is divided into two uh, subdivisions like this, R1 and R2, and we go back again to the um, to the source, right? And you have your your ground. So let's call it R2 here. Let's call it R3 here, and this is what you have. Okay, so this is the uh, the complex circuit that we refer to here, right? So again, if you look at it, this is not a series circuit. This is not a parallel circuit. This is a series parallel circuit, right? So you have both of them in here. This is referred to as a complex circuit. Complex because you have both of them in it, series and parallel. Okay, and we're telling us that we have this and we, uh, for, we are able to find an equivalent circuit for this. And the equivalent circuit, so maybe we could show you the equivalent circuit. Uh, so the equivalent circuit is something uh, as follows. So uh, we still have a source. It's the same value, so it's still Vs. Uh, the source will still have some resistor R1. And instead of having these two resistors, R2 and R3, these two resistors, R2 and R3, Right? We simply change it by some some resistor uh, R0. Right? So we just say, well, let's just simplify life and let's change it by an equivalent resistance and let's simply call it R0. Okay? And you have your ground. So we're telling us that both of these resistors, 
the, the one on the uh, left and the one on the right, they are equivalent. So this is the simple circuit. Uh, and in fact, it's not just simple. It is a series circuit, series circuit. Right? The components are connected in series. You look at it, everything is connected in series. You look at it, this is not series, this is not par uh, parallel, this is a series parallel circuit. So we have, let's read again, if a series equivalent circuit, so this one here, okay, uh, is drawn from a complex circuit, this one here, uh, the equivalent circuit, this one here, this one here, this is the equivalent circuit, okay, uh, it can be analyzed with which one? So if you want to figure out different things that you want to find here, for so for example, when we analyze, we generally uh, are looking for maybe the current. So the current here would be a current that flows into resistor one, it goes into resistor two, and it goes back again here, and it has a name, so let's just call it I, uh, IS or I total. And let's say you want to find, I don't know, maybe the voltage here, the voltage uh, uh, across uh, R0, the, the combination of R2 and R3, and let's just call it V0. So, uh, or maybe you're looking for the voltage here, the voltage V1. These are the different things that you will need to get. So if, you, if this is what you're trying to do, you're trying to analyze, you want to find IS, you want to find V0, you want to find V1, which one of these uh, different approaches would you use? These different tools would you use? Voltage divider rule, we said, is always relevant with a series circuit. So anytime you mention voltage divider rule, it is always relevant to series circuit. It's a good shortcut to find, uh, let's say, V0 or V1 right away without doing too much of work right so voltage divider rule with series circuits would work so a should settle, should certainly be uh, should certainly be considered okay uh what about the next one uh current uh, uh, uh kirchhoff's voltage law well kvl is also always relevant with a series circuit KCL is related to a parallel circuit. It's related when you have that kind of uh, setup, but KVL is always to a series circuit. So B should also be uh, uh, as well. And therefore, A is the one, B is the one. And if you look here, none of the above, well, that's not true. Both of the above, A and B, well, this is true. So the answer should really be C. The answer should indeed be C. So let's verify. That's, that's that's exactly what we expected. Question number three for the circuit shown. Um, so so the circuit shown. The, this is the circuit here. We're giving us uh, four statements, and we want we are we're supposed to find the the right statement uh, from among these four. So let's maybe uh, begin by annotating this uh, this circuit. Uh, so if we um, come in and then uh, we, we could maybe show the, the path for the uh, for the current current flows like this it goes into uh, it goes into resistor one uh, from resistor one it reaches this junction it is split part of it goes to resistor two the other to resistor three it moves through this path it emerges here and it goes back again to the source um, you have your uh, voltage V1 here, voltage V3 here, uh, and voltage V2 here. Okay, and what we're asking the following. We're saying R1 is in series with R2. Well, R1 is here, R2 is here. Uh, they're not in series. If they were in series, they would connect it straight to each other without any interruption. This is interrupted. R1 and R2 are not in series. There's this R3 that is connected between them. So this statement is not true. So A is certainly not true. Number B. So uh, B, we have uh, the, the, the following statement. R1 uh, is in parallel with R2. So this is R1. And this is our two, and we're saying they are in parallel. If they are in parallel, then both ends of the component are should have. Uh, so, so there should be two nodes. Uh, here, you don't have two nodes that are uh, common between R1 and R2. There's R3 in between them. So again, B is also not true. A is not true. B is not true. C, R2 is in series with R3. 
R2 and R3, and we're saying they are in series. So you have R2, you have R3, they are in series. Not quite, they're not connected in series. Uh, they have a common node here, a common node here between R2 and R3, uh, but they are not in series. So the C is also not true. And finally, we have R2 uh, and R3 are in parallel. So if you have your R2, this is your R2, this is your R3, and they do have a common node here, one node here, one node here, and therefore they are connected in parallel. This statement is true. So from all that, that we read here, the only one that that is really accurate is really D. So maybe we could check. This is exactly uh, what we expected. Last question, question four. We ask you that for the circuit shown, so the circuit here, KVL, Kirchhoff's voltage law, applies only to the outside loop, applies only to the A junction, uh, can be applied to any closed path, or does not apply. So as you know, with my style, as I always like to uh, annotate a, a, a circuit, so let's let's do that just to stay consistent. So you have your current that leaves, it goes into resistor one. From resistor one, it comes to junction A. Uh, it is split. Part of it goes to resistor two. The rest goes to resistor three. It passes these resistors, um, and it comes back to this junction here, and it reemerges and it goes back again to the source. Okay, uh, this is your voltage V1, this is your voltage V2, and this is your voltage V3. Okay, and we are set, talking of KVL. Uh, so don't forget, KVL is anytime we look at, um, uh, so KVL is always related to a series uh, circuit, uh, series. Uh, KCL is related to a junction and uh, KVL is always applied around a closed path, around a closed circle, uh, a path for the current to flow. So if you look here, uh, let's see which one uh, makes sense and which one doesn't. Uh, I think I, uh, I mentioned it earlier in the lecture is that KVL, when it comes to a series parallel circuit, and by the way, this is a series parallel circuit. This is not a series circuit. This is not a parallel circuit. This is both. So it's a complex circuit. You have both a series component and you have parallel component. Um, KVL applies to the different path uh, for the current flow. Right, so anywhere you have a path, a KVL will apply. So let me just show you different ways where KVL would apply here. So maybe we could change the, the color so we have a, a different color. Let's consider maybe this one. So KVL would apply here. If you have your current that flows, uh, you could look at KVL that goes here, that goes like this. And around this path, KVL would work, this path. And if you look for, for this one, KVL for this path here would be, um, let's, let's maybe use a different color, would be uh, minus Vs, because it's leaving the source, minus Vs, plus V1, plus V3, equals to zero. So around this uh, violet color, KVL applies, and this is what we got here. KVL does all, also can, can be applied uh, for uh, uh, across a different path as well. So for instance, you could also have KVL here. So uh, we could have KVL, and maybe we could use yellow as better, so it's a bit different. KVL would apply across this path. So if you look here, if you come in in here, it'll go through this closed path and move here. And so for the yellow uh, path, how do we write KVL? Well, this is how we write it. So it would be minus Vs, you're leaving the source. Um, it would be plus uh, V1, plus V1. It would be uh, plus v2 and that should give you zero as well okay 
In fact, just by inspecting these two together, you realize that V2 should equal to V3. Right? So if you inspect these two together, right? so they, they look pretty much the same. Right? You have this, you have this, you have this, you have this, which really means that V2 and V3 are equal. So V3 is equal to V2. And this is not a weird uh, result because if you notice, they are connected... Uh, Resistor 2 and resistor 3, they are connected in a parallel, so this result kind of makes sense. Uh, but here we're just showing you how to write the KVL. So the KVL for the purple uh, path is this. The KVL for the yellow path is this. It works. Can you also find a KVL for a different path? Uh, there is a third path that we could uh, that we could show, and I'll just show it to you right now. Uh, and it's this this path here. So you could look at the path here. Maybe we could uh, look at here, the current that goes into V3, it leaves and it comes in here and that's another path, right? This is a third path. So in this case, what you have is you have, uh, let's write KVL, it's uh, plus V3, plus V3. Uh, but it leaves V2, so it's my, uh, uh, it's, um, I'm sorry, it's, it, here it enters, so it's plus V3, and it leaves V2, so it's minus V2 equals to zero. This is another KVL, which basically means from this KVL is this fact here that we found V2 equals to V3. So in reality, you could write KVL for any closed path doesn't matter which closed path you have any closed path in a series parallel circuit uh, KVL would uh, would work right so in this case uh, uh, we showed it to you for all the three possible uh, KVL paths the outside loop the inside loop here this smaller loop as well they all will have KVL okay so if we go now through the uh, the different options that, that were given let's just see which one uh, makes sense and which one doesn't so right now you look for the circuit shown is kvl kvl applies only to the outside loop only to the outside loop uh no that's not true uh, outside loop in addition to others so a is wrong applies only to the a junction to the a junction here that's also not true if you have a junction it's because you are looking at the uh, KCL. So anytime we talk about junctions or nodes and uh, current that flows into a node and current that leaves a node, that we're talking about KCL. So this is not KVL. So B is also not true. Uh, can be applied to any closed path. This seems to be the, the correct answer. So it's really C. This is the correct answer, like we showed it to you. KVL would work for any closed path. Uh, does not apply. Well, that's also not true. So the answer is really uh, C. Okay, that completes the lecture today. Thank you for your attention.